the chickens via technology. Right here. Plus, this will make it more fun because that cord, I'm sure, will trip me a few times today. One more interesting class. So, what we're smack dab in the middle of. What we're smack dab in the middle of right now. And your exam you just submitted, both the out of class and the in class part, dealt with probability distributions, t tables, if you will. And your out of class had some equations and you got some graphs. There's all, there's all there's different ways of looking at it. But the particular distribution we're looking at right now is called the binomial distribution, which with the very last thing we talked about, we'll fire it up here again moment. Actually, I'm sorry for now. Let's do a recap. Yes. Let me fire it up right now. All right. So we had. There we go. This is the last thing we kind of wrapped up on. Thursday of last week. You probably forgot that already. That's okay. That's why I linked the PowerPoints to the schedule page so you can get to them. Binomial random variables, binomial probabilities are a very specific kind of random variable. Very specific kind. Why are they called binomial? Two what's good. There's two what? When you mean when you say modes, what do you mean, Kate? There's well, actually, they're going to be singular. Pumped. Are they? Okay. Believe it or not. And we'll come back to that momentarily. There's two most What are there two of? <laughs> so, Max, that? that's it. Now, oh, when Max okay. goes into the bin to grab a chick, the chick's either going to be a boy or a girl. When you flip a coin, the coin is either going to be heads or tails. When you ski off the summit of Mount Bachelor, you're either going to well, live or die. <laughs> I was thinking, get down without stopping or not. That was a little less tragic. <laughs> okay? You set out to do anything. It either happens or it doesn't. You either have brown hair or you don't. You're either left-handed or you're not. You can make lots of things by knowing you, you can. We're going to go through some examples here momentarily. But I want to make sure you understand what this, this program is doing before we get into the nuts and bolts more of one particular exercise. So the idea of the binomial experiments is, the reason it's called bi is because you've got two possible outcomes for every experiment, every, every trial, two possible outcomes. Uh, the outcomes should be mutually exclusive, which means if it's one, it's not the other. If it's one, it's not the other. Um, you should fix the number of trials. We'll come back to that and why that's important momentarily. So when I told Max to go in a store, go, buy, go get four birds. I didn't say, here's a box, grab as many birds as you can shove into the box. Because with a six-year-old, that doesn't end well. Okay? <laughs> so go in, get four birds. Fixed number, fixed number. We'll talk about when you don't fix the number. It's interesting as well. Uh, constant complementary probabilities. That This was told to me by the gentleman at the desk. He said there's a 90% chance you're getting a girl with every pool and a 10% chance you're getting a boy with every pool. And that was what the interesting part was, was setting up the distribution around those, those parameters. And that's what the program I just gave you guys will do. So let's make sure you understand how to run that bad boy. And then we'll run it today a few times so you understand how to get it. Once you have the distribution, find the average, find the standard deviation, graphing, it's all the same. Everything's the same just like it was for any other distribution. It's just getting the distribution itself, you can generate it now using this bad boy. Now we spent a lot of time on Thursday, if you remember, it took us all the way around the room, creating by hand a flock of one, a flock of two, a flock of three, a flock of four, and Megan is like, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do that anymore, especially those coefficients out front. How many ways can you have two girls and two boys? How many ways can you have three and six? All the, all the different possibilities. That's what this takes care of for you. So fire it up. Nineteen eighty six, baby. Right here. Technology. There we go. <laughs> Press the PRGM button. I couldn't put this in your stat menu. I don't know how to do that. So I made a, made a program instead. Now, chances are you only have four things in, I'm guessing you only have four, or five things in your, uh, in your program list, because I gave you five, and if you didn't have anything else, 
Um, go find the one that's called Dist Phil. Dist Phil is your friend. I know, thrilling. So grab Dist Phil and then press enter to run it. What was I supposed to hit first? Program PRGM and write right under stat. And then hit enter? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. hit enter and it'll start it. And the first thing it asks you is, what's the smallest value of x? So in your mind, you have to know what the t-table is going to look like already. So you know if we're building my flock with four girls, or four, excuse me, four birds, what's the smallest number of girls I can have? Zero. I might not have any. Zero is the smallest. Perfect. Zero is the smallest. What's the large? And then, oh, yeah, then press enter. Yes, exactly. Then press enter to kind of enter that in. Largest number of girls I can have? Four. Press enter again. Okay. Now, this is the, this is the option. You, you've got some choices here. Most of the time, you're just going to use the binomial option, which is that's because we're doing chicks, either a boy or a girl, or a girl or a boy. And then it's S for the probability. And this is where you have to get that percentage given to you. And this was, in my case, the gentleman at the desk who said, what's the chance of a girl? 90%. 90%. Point 0.9. Make sure you enter as a decimal, otherwise the TI gets upset. Okay. Press enter. Now, it's kind, of, it's kind of boring, like, oh, it's done. Yay, very good to these <laughs> But this isn't where the interesting stuff is. The interesting stuff is in your stat editor. Press stat, edit, there's your distribution now. That's what took us, what, 15 minutes on Thursday to create. There it is done for you. So now you know what's the chance of getting no girls, two girls, all girls. Everything's right there. And that's beautiful. And that's beautiful. Because now you don't have to go through the kind of annoyance of drawing out that right-hand probability column that's right there in L2 for you. Is that fair? Ish. Mm -hmm. Now why this is useful, why this is useful is it helps you answer questions more rapidly. For example, I was teaching this lesson last, last spring in the library. And I'm loud, we, we all know that. And I had the doors open in the library, which is a terrible idea. Yeah, I had to be in the library, time. first of all. And Mike Smith, so you, I'm not sure if you guys know Mike, I got a picture of him, show you. Great dude. Great dude. He used to work down in the uh, advising center. He, uh, he said, you know what? Is that what he really looks like? That's him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's Mike. Yeah, that's Mike. That's Mike's wholesome random guy. Like, well, he's down in the basement library. He was, he was he, you know, Joe Vickery Biles works down the cap center of Vickery. He was sitting in for Vickery when she was on sabbatical. So I, I think he's probably working back at college except so Anyway, he thinks chickens too. And he heard me doing my spiel. About about the, the chicken flock. And he walked in, he's like, you know what? I got something to say about that. I'm like, oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And I think this picture, is this from his flock? No. He had a fairly large flock of birds. I think he had something like seven or eight birds. And he's like, I went to the store and I bought I bought, what's they say it's seven? I bought seven chicks and I brought them home and they grew up and I got a rooster. Now I'm pissed because now I only have six chickens. And I was like, okay. And he's like, well, should I be pissed? I'm like, I don't know. What are you pissed about? He's like, because I want eggs. I'm like, what's well, a good reason to be pissed? I was like, well, what do you want to do? Like, what, what, what aim do you want by being upset about, you know, having six, six girls and a boy? He's like, well, I want my money back. I'm like, okay, there, there you go. I want, a, want a refund of some kind, whether it's a financial one or whether it's a, a free chick or something like that. I said, well, let's quantify. Should you be upset about having six girls and a boy if you bought seven chicks? We can now answer this question, can't we? We can. Let's answer it. Turn that off. Grab your program. Tell me how to answer this question. Help me. Use technology to answer this question. To, to tell whether or not Mike should go back and demand some. Well, should Katie? we go back into the program? And I think so, yes. I think program, disfill, again, yes. Disfill. Enter. Enter. Smallest x. Zero. 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 Because he might not get any girls. He'd be really upset then. Largest seven. And the largest is going to be seven, yes? That's the ideal. If you're buying chickens for eggs, you want to get seven girls out of seven, obviously, because you get the most eggs that way. It, yeah. It's binomial again. Enter. Good or one. Good, good, good. It's still point 0.9. It's still point 0.9, assuming he bought his from the same store I got mine. So it's still point 0.9. I'm going kind of rhyme for Dr. Susie. And it says done, which is fantastic. What should we do now? Stat, edit. Stat, edit. Okay, there we go. Now you can't see seven yet. We'll scroll down to that in a second. But that's what happened to Mike right there. And that's, oh, you can't see this one. There's only a 37% chance you should have. Hang on. Let's, let's, 
That's what happened to Mike right there. This is his situation. So what, what would the chance of getting all girls be? Good. There it is. There it is. So this is what he wanted. And this is what he got. What do you think? Does he have a case? It, it's, it's almost 50-50. It's actually a little bit against getting all girls, if you think about it. It's about a 48% chance you're going to get all girls. That's almost a coin flip, yeah? That's basically saying 50-50, you're either going to get all girls or you're not going to get all girls. Right? That's, that's the point. Is this the most likely outcome? Yes, clearly the most likely outcome. Definitely the most likely outcome. But this one's not horribly unlikely. That's the, that's the problem. That's the problem. And that's why I told him, like, you don't have much of a complaint, really. I mean, 90% likelihood means 90% likelihood. What you might want to do is find a breeder that can guarantee a higher rate of, of sexing. Which, interestingly enough, one of the students in my class yesterday said her grandma gets chickens that are sexed 98% correctly. Now, let's suppose Mike got his chicks from that breeder with 98% effectiveness, but he still got six girls and a boy. Right? Still got six girls and a boy. So I'm going to run the program again. Still zero to seven. That didn't change, right? Because we still have, we're buying seven birds. You can get up to seven girls. You can have down to no girls. It's binomial again. But her grandma, apparently, whatever breeder it is, was 98% effective at sexing, at sexing female chicks. So now when Max goes in there and grabs a bird, it's not 90-10, it's 98-2. Fair enough? Okay, done. Mm -hmm. What do we think now? What do we think now? It's no longer almost 50 50, it's almost 90 10, 85 15. Now, 12% is still fairly likely, but it's nowhere near as close to this one as it was previously. And isn't that amazing? By picking up only 8 percentage points of accuracy. Now, the first thing I say, of course, is, and the first thing I said to that student was what? How is she measuring the 98%? The same question I had for the guy at High Desert Regional. How are you getting 90%? Is somebody actually counting all the ones that are going out and coming back in as males to get the 10%? Or so when she looked at me, he's like, dude, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm talking about how to like, use the mathematics properly. We can do all kinds of wonderful mathematics on 90%, 98%, 99%. But if those numbers aren't correct, all the math, you ever heard the phrase garbage in, garbage out? It's an old phrase from the 80s in computer programming. You can write great code, but if you put crap numbers into it, you're going to get garbage back out. I mean, this is all great, assuming that it's actually 98%, yes? Mm -hmm. Assuming that it's actually 98%. You know, they're just pretty easy for them to yeah. feel like, well, how, how sure are you? Right, exactly. 99.9% .9 sure. We're so, we're so, that word, that the number 99, we're so programmed to it as Americans. We like 99s, like we like dollar 99s and 99 cent meals and things like that. <laughs> but when you start adding nines to those things, I'm 99.999% sure. Are you? Really? Do you have the precision available to actually be that sure? Think about your second project. Suppose you want to be 99.99999% sure those seeds germinate. It was exponentially more seeds as you add nines onto there because it's exponential. It's exponentially increasing the precision. So that's why you got to be careful. I want to know where this 90 and 98 percent came from. Assuming they're right, we can do the math. But you have to make sure they're right, and that's where you're saying you guys have to take a sampling methods class. Some of you may have already taken it. You had you may might have to. Well, and I mean talking about reporting as well. Reporting yes. is a huge one. Mm -hmm. And the binomial distribution comes in super handy with, with all kinds of popularity polls, Gallup polls, Rasmussen polls, Quick Act polls, Fox News polls, CNN polls, NPR polls. They're all based on this distribution, but it's also based on how good the questioning that you're doing is for, for the population. You know, What do you think? Is mom doing a good job or is he a complete and total loser? I mean, do you, do you ask a question like that? No, because you're putting bias in the eyes of the person responding. So you have to be careful. You can get data from that. Yes. You can get data back from those people, but who knows if it is going to tell you anything useful. That's the trick. But that's 244 and beyond. So we'll get back into that. Right now, is this cool? See how this bad boy runs? Good, good. Now, I want to take a pause now. I want to go back to, to this guy. Because knowing how to use the binomial is one thing. But equally as important, if not more important, is knowing when to use it. I did. I think. Well, I duct taped a little. Hmm. The focus. It's got it. 
There, okay, it's trying to focus. It's, got, it's had a focus issue recently. I don't know what's going on. I think I put a three-year warranty on it. I'll take it back What's that look? Mike Smith looks great. It does a lot of shaking after you touch it. Oh, that's got to be what it is, Scott. The fact that it's... Like I can watch it. There we go. But if I bounce it, it's yeah. try, trying to focus on that. So let's just do that. Thank you. I'm still glad with the three-year warranty. <laughs> is it recording? Did I push go? Mm. REC or is it green on top? It's green on top. It's green on top. That means it's not recording. Thank you. I got you. <laughs>